So as you can see, it's uh, late in the night here, and uh, as the day rolls over into the night, we have kind of rolled over to the final topic in our course on uh, solid mechanics or mechanics of materials. And in this topic, we are going to talk about columns. Columns are one of the most common building members, bridge members, any kind of structure that you look at. The elements in the structure which sort of transmits the load that you have all the way from the, from the top to the foundation below or to the ground below are essentially columns which are there. And uh, if you take a look and if you are ever in Mumbai, some of you are in Mumbai already, uh, some of you study in IIT Bombay and but those who are not if you are coming to Mumbai you will see that you know these are one of the if you can you guess from where you know these columns are yes you are right here this is in the terminal 2 international airport which is there these are these beautifully flared structures of the flares flared columns that you have over here and columns are something where you see that uh, as structural engineers you do not have many places to sort of you know bring your artistic uh, values forward so columns essentially provide an opportunity where you can get creative or you can get artistic for that matter right and columns remember that uh, uh, what, what, what comes to your mind first when we talk about columns it essentially is something which you know takes the load from the top and transmits to the ground below so these are essentially actually loaded members something which we have studied we have studied with when we have a member with a load p you know sigma equals to p over a delta equals to pl by a and so on so what's special about this chapter in this chapter what we are going to talk about and this topic can be blown out of proportion and can be made very big we are going to cover some basic aspects of that this is the buckling of columns so this topic should ideally be named as the buckling of columns that you have now again just starting on where i was that uh, the columns are you will see in you know in ancient roman architectures as i said that the structural engineers get creative on you know how to flare the columns how to make them look beautiful and all but if you see from the point of view of mechanics columns are something which just take the axial load so for that matter if you look at you know truss members that you have each link of the truss it's also in in, a, in, a, in an analogical way it is also a column but it because it only takes the axial load either axial compression or tension now columns are very popular in bridges warehouses and so on and you can get a lot creative with columns for example you see over here just to make you know the path under the bridge so that you do not have obstruction to the traffic and so on you can have the columns which are inclined as well so of course these are not taking purely axial load you can it can take some amount of moment as well and later you will see for buildings columns are rarely designed purely for axial load you can have bending of the columns as well Right. Now, uh, what we know, as I just gave you a hint that we had studied this, we have studied these actually loaded members over here. And what we have seen that we have a member in which you are applying a load P over here, we know the relationship that your sigma, the stress is P divided by A and the deformation delta is PL by A. And from that we have also, you know, sort of looked into the uh, the allowable load the critical load and so on so the as long as you know sigma is sigma is uh, less than sigma allowable uh, we mark the member as safe and correspondingly if you plug in delta over here your you know delta when delta is less than some allowable deflection that you have it's a uh, we mark the structure as safe right now we have seen this so what have we not seen and as i gave you a hint already we are going to talk about the buckling of columns which is there which is a kind of you know sort of a phenomena like this so if you take a look let me uh, switch the scene over here so you see if i what i have in my hand is just the refill of a you know ball pen so if you see this one this is a thin slender long member that you have now if i take this one over here right and if i am applying load it's fine maybe it is undergoing those minute deformation delta equals to pl by ae that you have over there but suppose if i keep on increasing the load it is beyond a point i feel unstable i feel that my finger if it you know presses this thing just a little bit is just going to snap now why do we have this although i'm applying the load on the top and the bottom why do i have this now if i'm applying the load exactly at the center of the cross section and if i'm supporting exactly at the center of the cross section at the bottom and there is no imperfection within the material it will undergo pure compression but suppose if you have little imperfections or the load is slightly eccentric from the centroid you will start to have this phenomenon of buckling which is there and so it's a kind of an instability that's why i said uh, there are advanced topics on, on on this aspect over here but we are going to look at simple things on how to maybe 
find the load at which my fingers start to feel uncertain that this is going to you know buckle and snap over there right now uh, let me go ahead so we did not account for this phenomena over here that beyond a particular load so when you are applying small small loads well let me go back to the slide uh, that uh, when we are accounting for small small loads as i showed you in this you know refill over here we have the usual things you know in place over here but when beyond a particular load this guy starts to buckle so it have a we have some load tcr which is the critical load that we have over here now let me go ahead and show you an an experimental uh, uh, testing as well so that you get a rough idea of what i'm talking about So see this experimental setup that I'm talking to you about. It will comprise of a column under pin pin loads. So you have a pin at the top, and you have a you know pin connection at the bottom, and you are applying the load over here. So ideally, for small loads, you will just have an axial. But as I said, if you have some imperfections or the load is slightly eccentric, then you can have the phenomena like this. So let's go ahead and play this video so that you can see. So you see, you have sort of idealized a pin and a pin condition, and you are applying the load from the top. Now you see, as the load is being applied. this guy starts to deflect right and you see the level of deflection keeps on increasing over and over and you start to have some kind of a necking phenomenon over here now as you will keep on if you keep on applying the load or suddenly applied load you will have a sudden kind of a failure over here so now if we take the specimen over here and then we look at what happened to the specimen this is essentially you know what happens to the specimen over here let me pause the video so you see that you know this is that center line over here and about that about here about this particular point once you have exceeded the critical load that is there you are going to have you know this kind of necking and now remember we have also talked about some of the material characteristics or material properties so once this necking happens you are having a large amount of deflection at the center so you are going to have a sudden drop in the load but an increase in the in the deformation that is there so or a constant load for which the increase in the, depending upon the material properties so if we just uh, look at the you know stress strain curve for this one now uh, this is going to come up uh, right now uh, so if you see this is the stress strain curve you see you have the the say the y axis is the axial load the load with you are you are pressing the column and this is the you know displacement at the end maybe at the top over there right so as you see that uh, once so initially it is that you know pl by ae or whatever you have over there and uh, once you are reaching one critical amount of load critical amount of load over here then your load suddenly drop but your deflection you know increases all of a sudden so this is essentially what you are having in this one so this is the point where your load reaches the critical value uh, beyond which your column starts to buckle or have that have that level of instability over there so let me go back to the lecture again right so this is the short video that we looked at where we saw when we applied the load the how the phenomena of the buckling of the columns takes place so essentially we are trying to look at something like this over here right so until now we have account not accounted when we talked about bars under pure axial loading we have not accounted for the case of the buckling of columns which we are going to study in this particular topic that is there right so it leads to instability essentially now if we try to you know sort of simplify this phenomena and you know this is uh, not a uh actual de derivation for the column but if you just want to visualize that how this you know buckling happens for example if you take say two rigid bars now you see this buckling happens at the center part over here as expected now if you take say two rigid bars and if you connect them with a, a rotational spring that you have over here as a simplified equivalence as you can see that when you know you know applying this load maybe with a slight imperfections or the, the there is geometric imperfection imperfection or the material imperfection and so on you are going to have a shape which is like this it is going to you know sort of buckle in an equivalent way you know buckle so this bar is not originally rigid if it was rigid of course it won't you know go down so you have rigid bars over here with a spring at the center so you are going to have a phenomena like this so over here now if you just you know take this and if you draw the free body diagram so let me just you know go back once and try to indicate what i'm trying to say so if i uh, try to draw say the if i take you know this portion that is there and if i you know draw the free body diagram of that one this is what i was at if you draw the free body diagram and you have of course have to maintain equilibrium so when you do that you see you are applying a load p over here you will have a corresponding vertically applied load p and this will be separated by a distance and this distance from here to here so two equal and opposite forces separated by this distance so this distance will be if this length is l over 2 and this angle of theta this will be the 
l over to sine of theta right so if we have to write the maybe the expression for the disturbing moment so let's call this disturbing because i'm applying the load p as a result of which i am going to have some amount of disturbance so if i call this as the the disturbing moment is going to be p times l over 2 sine of theta and what is the restoring or the balancing moment what, what is balancing that well because you have the spring which is undergoing a total of theta and theta so two theta rotation that you have over here so this the, the restoring moment or the balancing moment is going to be beta r times two theta So now that we have, so let's call this, you know, disturbing moment as maybe m of d over here and the balancing moment as m of b. So now ideally for the structure to be stable, you know, so that the spring say does not cross the allowable limit. So buckling can be in this case can be imagined as when say the, you know, the spring, you know, crosses the allowable limit of the stresses within the spring and so on beyond which it, you know, it, it fails to, you know, function as a spring and the whole system sort of collapses that you have. So in a, in an ideal condition when the system is still stable, so we know say at the limiting stage, we have MD equals to MB, right? Now say you are, you know, keeping on increasing the disturbing moment by increasing the load P over here, you are going to reach a point where the resistive capability of the, of the spring essentially disappears and the entire system collapses. So let's say at, the, at that limiting point, we have just before reaching the limiting point, we have MD equals to MB, right? So if you see that this can be expressed in these ways. So for example, say at that limiting point, when you have a slight increase in the disturbing moment, your entire system all of a sudden collapses, right? So this can be expressed like so it is an unstable equilibrium that you have and this can you know this is an analogical way to talk about stability that you have and if you, you will later if you take courses on chaos theory you will uh, come across this more that if you have an you know inverted bowl and on top of that if you keep a ball over here this ball which is with us you know slight disturbance it can just roll up it's not a stable system anymore right? now suppose md is less than the say the allowable limit for the spring so md is less than mb so this bowl essentially essentially gets inverted so you have a stable system even if you roll the ball somewhere over here it will come back to its original position which is over here right now at the critical limit where you have the md equals to mb that is when you are just at the tip of the critical load that you have over here so in that case you will have you know a kind of a, a neutral system that you have so you have a flat like flat surface and have a ball if you just give a roll the ball goes and it stops at a particular point right so this is the unstable system stable system and this is the neutral system that you have over here now let me go ahead and go to the next page where you will see these equations are you know more uh, clearly written out over here now you see this is what we wrote previously we will come to this equation later so md p will be l over to sine of theta and beta r equals to 2 theta so now if you say equate these two guys over here you will see essentially you will get see eventually you want to get everything in terms of the load p which is easy to do because if you equate md equals to mb finally you will get this particular relationship again at the limiting stage that when p equals to pcr it this guy uh, boils down to four times the beta r that is the rotational stiffness of the spring divided by the l the length of the spring now you see there is one very interesting observation over here before coming to that let me just point it out so this equations or these inequalities and that equality over here instead of you know expressing in terms of the disturbing moment and the balancing moment i can express in terms of p and pcr and how can i do that if p is greater than the critical load then your you know mb sort of collapses and your whole system is going to collapse if p is less than pcr so you see if you if you have a load p which is say less than the critical load and if you remove the p this is going to spring back to the straight configuration that you have over here so if P is less than PCR, uh, your system is stable and the system tends to return to the original state once you remove the load. Now for P exactly equals to PCR, you are at that tipping point where you are neither failed nor sorry, but you are exactly at that critical load over there. Slight increase from this load will lead to the, the failure of your system over here. Now one very interesting thing to note which I was telling you before, if you take a look at this particular equation over here, can you, can you observe or can you realize something? See this equation is virtually independent of theta. So that is an important thing. So this is independent of theta completely. This just depends upon the rotational characteristics of 
of the spring and the length and as i was saying this entire thing can be represented over here so if your p is greater than pcr you are on stable equilibrium if your p exactly equals to pcr you are in a stable equilibrium if your p is less than pcr no, sorry if p is equals to pcr you have a neutral equilibrium and p is less than pcr just after removing the load this is going to snap back to what it was before over here you are in the region of the stable equilibrium that you have over here now this particular example we looked at this is a hypothetical example uh, where we sort of you know idealize the whole buckling phenomenon just to explain with a spring and a rigid bars at the two ends just to see that how the center part buckles now what we are going to do actually what uh, someone has already done in the 1700s who was mr Euler or dr Euler, sorry uh, who has already done this so he has already derived some of the equations for the buckling of columns so next we are going to go and look at the classic Euler formula for the buckling of the columns which is there